just to recap what we've discussed so far. First thing I want to look for if I'm evaluating a limit is, is it continuous? Can I just evaluate by plugging in? Okay. If I have a fraction, um, there are a couple of possibilities. Generally speaking, uh, for some fractions, if they're continuous and I can plug in. But if I can't, it's going to be because the bottom is going to zero most often. If the bottom goes to zero and the top goes to a non-zero number, I know I have a vertical asymptote. To determine which of these three options, infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist, is the correct limit, we just do a sign check. The most complicated case we're looking at is if the top and bottom both go to zero, so that I have an indeterminate form. And our strategy, we said, is to find another function g that's the same as x except at a, and then the limit of f is going to be the same as the limit of g as x is approaching a. And basically, I'm thinking of it this way. f of x is going to be a function where the graph has a hole in it. g of x is going to be probably that same function, but with the hole filled in. Usually, g of x is going to be a continuous function that's the same as f everywhere except the only difference is that g has a point where f has a hole. And so we can evaluate this one. And we're going to have two main techniques that we use in this case. The first we saw in the last case. Sometimes we can factor and cancel. So if I can factor something out and I can cancel that factor that's making the denominator go to zero, I'm usually creating a new fraction because now whatever was not in the domain is in the domain of that new function. But I can evaluate the limit of that function. The other thing that we're going to take a look at in this video is that I can rationalize and cancel. Okay. So that's going to be something that I'm going to use a lot when I happen to have roots. Okay, so let's just say I wanted to take the limit as x approaches 2 of root x minus root 2 over x minus 2. All right. Well, clearly I can't plug in 2 because it would make the denominator go to 0. But if I tried to plug in 2 on the top, I get root 2 minus root 2. The top also goes to 0. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that I can somehow cancel something. One thing I could do that is a perfectly legitimate option is I could view x minus 2 as a difference of two squares. <laughs> this would be actually going with the factor and cancel method. I could say this is the limit as x goes to 2 of root x minus root 2. x is root x squared and 2 is root 2 squared. So I could say it's root x minus root 2 times root x plus root 2. Then I could cancel that and say now this is the limit as x goes to 2 of 1 over root x plus root 2. I've created a new function here. 2 was not in the domain of the original function, but it's in the domain here. So this would be 1 over root 2 plus root 2. That's 1 over 2 root 2. Okay. I'm not going to be picky this semester that you necessarily rationalize your denominators. Uh, but we certainly could, if I did, this would just become root 2 over 2 times another 2 is 4. Okay, so that's an option. That's actually, again, like I said, doing the factoring and canceling. Some of you might like that, but some of you might say, you know what, I look at x minus 2, and I'm just not thinking factoring, because I tend to think something's going to factor if it's degree 2 or higher. I don't want to have to factor this. The other option is that we can rationalize. Now, I purposely made it for this problem so that the roots are on the top. You may be used to rationalizing denominators, because in simplest form, we don't allow roots in denominators. Like I just said, I'm not going to be super picky about that this semester. So unless I explicitly say, rationalize your denominators or give everything in simplest form, you don't need to. 
basically we're going to hit some time consuming problems. And so I want you to be focusing your time and your energy on the calculus of things, not so much on cleaning up your final answers. Although it's a very useful skill to have, and when you're checking your answers in the back of the book, they usually do rationalize denominators. Okay, so what do I mean by rationalizing here? Okay. Well, the idea is if one of my problem pieces involves roots, I'm considering the top and the bottom to be problem pieces because they're the things that are going to zero. And if they didn't go to zero, I wouldn't have a problem. I have a problem because I have this indeterminate form with zero on top and zero on bottom. So if one of the problem pieces involves roots, and I don't care whether it's on top or bottom, I'm going to try to rationalize that problem piece. And I'm going to do that by multiplying by 1. We multiply by 1 a lot in math. That's because multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of what I have. But if I use a convenient form of 1, then I can change the way that thing looks. What I'm going to use here is the conjugate. The conjugate is going to be these same two terms, a root x and a root 2, but connected with the opposite sign. So it'll be root x plus root 2. And of course, I've got to multiply by that on top and on bottom because that way I'm multiplying by 1. Okay, so now this is the limit as x goes to 2. Now here's why this works. I'm going to go ahead and foil out the top. Root x times root x is just x. I'm going to get plus root 2x minus root 2x. Those are exact opposites, so they cancel each other out. And then my last terms just give me a minus 2. Okay. Essentially, I'm using the notion of a difference of two squares um, in doing this. Same two terms, added and subtracted. I'm going to get the first term squared. Root x squared is x and then minus the last term squared, root 2 squared is 2. Okay, now on bottom, really important to be lazy. Okay. Now this is what I like to call strategic laziness. Plain old regular laziness, that would be don't watch the videos, don't do the homework, don't read the book, this is not a good thing. Strategic laziness, I'm going to not do calculations like multiplying out the bottom, that would make things more complicated. Because what I have right now, let's write it out again to make it clear, I've got an x minus 2 on top. I've got an x minus 2 on bottom. I'd like to cancel those. If I were to multiply this out, it would be harder to see that I had that x minus 2. Once I rationalize, this is still going to 0, but now it's a nice version of something that's going to 0. So I can cancel that and say now this is the limit as x goes to 2 of 1 over root x plus root 2. This is an algebraic function and it's continuous on its domain and 2's in the domain. So that's 1 over root 2 plus root 2. That's 1 over 2 root 2. And again if I choose to rationalize that would be root 2 over 4. I would accept either of these as the final answer. <laughs> So when I see polynomials, I'll try factoring and cancel, canceling. When I see things that involve roots that are going to zero, I usually will try to rationalize and cancel. Although sometimes you can do a factoring and cancel if you're willing to factor using factors that involve square roots.